Welcome to Utah Tech Leads Tech Tour of Utah. That's a whole lot of T's and a whole lot of Utahs. We're very excited to have you with us today. Today, we um, have as our co-host, Brian and Jay from Beyond Labs. How are you guys doing today? Doing great. Good, th good thanks. Yeah, so Jay, tell us a little bit about yourself and then maybe intro Brian for us. So I'm Jay Rains. I'm one of the co-founders at Beyond Labs. Um, I'm, I went to the University of Utah, so I did go to school here in Utah, but I spent most of my career in the Midwest. Uh, I came out here about eight years ago, and Brian and I and another gentleman started Beyond Labs, a tech transfer from BYU that does virtual science labs um, in chemistry, biology, and physics. And um, we founded the company in 2019, right before the COVID-19 pandemic, and that was a big catalyst for us. And Brian Woodfield, my partner here, is the inventor of these labs. He's a chemistry professor at BYU. Um, and this was his idea when he was a grad student uh, a long time ago. Not to make him sound old, but he's the same age as me, pretty much. So <laughs> anyway, so that's that's my partner, Brian. So yeah. that's us. Brian, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what kind of inspired you to create this. So as Jay said, I'm a professor at, at BYU. I'm a, I'm a chemistry professor. I've been at BYU for nearly 28 years. And um, I'm originally from California, went to graduate school at Berkeley um, uh, before becoming a professor at BYU. And when I was a graduate student, I was teaching, um, I was teaching a freshman lab at Berkeley and large sections 3,000 students in one class and um, just noticed as a graduate student even that students going through the labs um, were cookbooking their way. They weren't really learning anything. They were just doing experiments without actually understanding the context. And the other important question I recognized was why were we even doing these experiments? Because they're really not cutting edge or relevant to cutting edge research. And um, I recognized that students were more or less forced to cookbook their way through labs because they only had three hours, costs were limited, and we had safety concerns. So all of those combined, all of those issues combined kind of limit what you can do for students. And so even back in 1988, I had the idea that, you know, that if we could, uh, create a virtual environment that was sufficiently realistic that we could put students in these environments where they could actually learn and do experiments in a way that you can't do in a real lab. So we're, we're not in the business of doing away with real labs. What we really try to do is we try to augment uh, the labs that students can do. Sometimes they can't do any labs because of the situation that we're, they're in, but sometimes they can. And so we're here to augment the laboratory experience for students in chemistry, biology, and physics so that they can actually experience what real science is. So when I was first talking to Jay, I got really excited about this product because in all reality, kind of what you mentioned, there are certain things that have already been done before and certain things that have been messed up in every way that you can possibly mess them up. But when you're talking about in-lab work, can you kind of walk us through what that looks like or even show us if you have if you have that availability? So a real lab or a virtual lab? A virtual lab. Sure. Um, I can I can show you what one of our virtual labs look like. And in fact, I can probably show you two examples here. So um, let me share and um, so, so this is our, so, so what we've designed is we've created uh, lab benches. So uh, each lab bench uh, represents a virtual environment that's completely open-ended. So this is called calorimetry. It's where students would measure uh, different, uh, rea uh, different the, the heats associated with different reactions and processes. And so you can see here, it's just a lab bench. It's completely open-ended. So this is what we call sandbox mode. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so a student to do an experiment would have the procedures of what they would do, but 
but they would like grab a coffee cup and bring that coffee cup down here. And then maybe they would um, want to measure the heat of dissolving, say, um, ammonia nitrate here. So we would grab a bottle of ammonia nitrate and we would turn on our thermometer, have a graph, we would turn on the stirring. Maybe they, they're gonna, we need, we're gonna need to add some water. And so um, we'll fill up this graduated cylinder with 100 milliliters of water. And, um, and then we'll add that. And so stick out water. So then, then what I'll do is take off our lid. So you can see it's super realistic. It's, it's gonna be different for every student. You know, so they can always make the same mistake. So I'm going to go add approximately a gram and then I'll go add another scoop. So I'll have about two grams, zoom back out, and I'll just go add that. And you'll see here that the temperature starts falling. So here is a simple experiment that I just did it in about 20 seconds. Yeah. But in a real lab, that might take, um, to do all of that kind of work might take half an hour. So, but the idea here is that it's completely open-ended and we would allow students to make mistakes, but this is sandbox mode. So this is, there was no structure available to the student and we provide that with our activities, but this, but you can see here, this gives the power to the instructor to structure their work for their students based on their level and their, their learning goals and things like that. So, um, and so all kinds of assessments. So this is realistic and this is actually an experiment students would do. So let me just show you an example of um, um, an experiment that students would never be able to do. So this is something, you know, you know hundreds of thousands of students would do every year. Um, another example would be of, of an experiment they can't do. So this is our quantum lab. And so we also have the ability to preset and pre-configure the lab. So this was, um, so this is the Rutherford experiment. So in this experiment, you have alpha particles going through a gold foil and you detect these alpha particles on this phosphor screen. And so I can move the gold foil off. You can see you get a little spot, put the gold back in. You, you see a, an actual image of what the results would be like, and you could move your detector over here. So here we've just done Rutherford's Nobel Prize winning um, experiment on, on determining that the atom is mostly empty space. And this is an experiment no student would be able to do because you're throwing radioactive particles around the room, yeah. and so they can't do it. But here they can. So two quick examples of, of uh, um, how we can do these experiments. Um, you know, they're just the way they're structured, open-ended, but yet we also have the activities that kind of go with them. Yeah, that's fantastic. I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking of my own kid and all the different things that he could actually explore that he would never necessarily have the opportunity to explore because... I mean, to be completely honest, Murray School District just doesn't have the kinds of facilities like that, right? So, and that's just in K through 12. And you guys, you guys are in K through 12 as well as college. Is that correct, universities? That is correct, yeah. So the lab, so one thing that's interesting, and Brian kind of touched on it, but the labs are exactly the same. Uh, whoever opens it, you get the same open-ended experience, but the content changes based on their level of learning. So for K-12, we would have simpler activities um, and we even have middle school activities that are really simple. And then we have kind of more advanced activities for even, you know, chemistry majors. So, they, but they're using the same lab, just doing maybe more complicated stuff. Absolutely. That's, that's fascinating. And so, Brian, what kind of, what pulled you to this? What inspired you and your co-founder to, to start this? So, um, so when I had the idea, um, the best computer I had in the lab besides the supercomputer that was used for theoretical calculations would be, you know, we had a old IBM computer with eight colors and maybe a five megabyte hard drive. And so the 
technical ability at the time was not up to what I wanted to do in my head. So I kind of tabled the idea until about a decade later when I became a brand new professor at BYU in 1997. And um, BYU had these grants to um, fund new tech ideas. And so I got some of that money and we started doing some prototypes. And then I got funding from the US Department of Education to kind of do all of the chemistry labs. And um, at that time, so we went through a six year development for the chemistry labs. And um, um, so we did all that work at BYU and we partnered with Pearson Education. And so um, we did chemistry, high and uh, organic chemistry, which is sophomore level. And then we did, and then with Pearson, we developed um, physics and physical science, and then we did biology. And then, you know, over time, we, um, uh, the product just grew in size and complexity that uh, we decided, BYU and, and me, we decided to take the technology off campus from BYU. And so that's when we decided to, uh, decided to start Beyond Labs. And so, um, so Jay and uh, Brent, went, our other co-founder, we, we started Beyond Labs right before the pandemic hit, not knowing obviously about the pandemic. And yeah. that really catalyzed the development and taking the technology to its current state. Yeah, I can imagine it must have kind of blown up, especially as campuses and, and schools all across the, the country were closing down and trying to figure out how to continue their work. That must have been an interesting, I, I would say struggle, because ex rapid expansion can always be a struggle, but it must have been an interesting struggle for you guys to navigate. It was it was definitely interesting because in during the during the process of of COVID, we we were initially going out to get funding for this company, but um, COVID funded it for us, um, and we were in the process of of you know replatforming the entire product, converting everything to a kind of newer technology, all web based. So we were doing all that during COVID at the same you know the same time of onboarding all these customers, and it was really interesting. And we learned a lot about why people would use it and the use cases for the labs. And one of the use cases for the lab is lab replacement, but that's not the best use case because you can't really go into a chemistry lab and say, hey, we want to replace your lab with virtual labs. But it, that was the use case during COVID and that's still one of the use cases, but it's kind of more nuanced now, so. Yeah, absolutely, totally understandable. Well, this is a fantastic product and I'm like super excited to see what you guys can do with it. I know you have you know, contracts all across the, the country, but what are you looking at for Utah? Like, what are your goals in state, whether that be just to grow the company in state or whether that is to grow the company to the state, whatever that looks like, what are you guys looking for? I mean, we're, we haven't, it's interesting that we haven't had much penetration inside Utah in the government or in the K-12 area. We have universities using us, but, um, we're, we're used a lot in South America. We're working on big deals in India that are statewide. We would love to do stuff with the state of Utah. And we, we're, we're just not sure how to, to navigate the process. But I think these labs would be so beneficial for students in K-12. Um, I think they would be great. They could do pre-lab activities, post-lab activities. There'd be lots of engagement in the class with instructors and and schools that are online, these are the only really option you have if it's an online school. These are virtual labs that they can use. So yeah, we're, we would love to somehow figure that out. So I, let me piggyback off of what uh, Jay just said is when, when you say the word virtual lab to most administrators, K-12 and teachers, you know, they often think of what I would call, I, I would call them hokey dokey little little simulations where you push a button and you watch something yeah you know and i don't think people are aware of the depth and the complexity and the realism of the labs that are available that we can offer through beyond labs and the other thing that i think they lack is they if you haven't thought about it a lot is they're missing the actual really unique use cases so like jay said online school Sure, if you're going to have a lab experience, you're going to have to do a virtual lab. There's lab kits, but those are very expensive, um, yeah. especially order magnitude more than a virtual lab. And 
But the other use cases, though, are actually, instead of just solving a current problem, the use cases of the virtual labs can really enhance education beyond the online school, mm -hmm. like in the face-to-face. -face. And that's where the beyond labs can really be powerful is getting student engagement, engagement, getting students to really see what science is, you know, having them do experiments that you talk about in a classroom, but you can't do, but now you can actually do them. And I think that's where the real power is. And having the ability to talk to the right people at the state level to really show the power and make Utah continue to be at the cutting edge is, is really where we want to go. And, and kind of going on top of that, one of the ways we've partnered with um, people around the country and around the world is we do OEM integrations. Um, and even simpler than that, we can integrate right into other, into people's curriculum. So Brian briefly showed you how we can create presets. And so what we've done with publishing partners is we create a preset that launches our lab specifically configured to do an experiment right out of someone's digital curriculum. Mm -hmm. So right inside their LMS, they're doing their coursework. They, they read the instructions for what they're doing. And they say, now do this lab. You click a button, it takes them to be on labs and we give them the instructions to do the lab. And we can auto grade that. Um, and that's kind of what we do. So it's kind of a behind the scenes way of providing virtual labs to people. And, uh, but that's what we're doing with many partners. So we could do that with anybody. So oh, that's fantastic. It's a super exciting product. And I'm really glad to see that you guys have been able to have so much success with or without the pandemic, like no, no shade, but you know, the pandemic definitely, um, expanded our understanding of what was possible from home and what wasn't. And I think that can be to the benefit of a lot of people as well. So, well, thank you guys so much for being here. We really appreciate your time and we're super excited to see what you guys do next.